Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter and welcome to another video. This time is going to be just a quick little um, tutorial about how to refactor, how you might want to go about it, and some recommendations that uh, I personally uh, can give. And of course this is just my opinion, maybe maybe you have a different approach, but again if you're just willing to learn then hey, um, here's, here's my two cents to the conversation. So this whole thing, uh, this whole thing happened uh, because uh, this user called Mackie, Mackie, uh, on our Discord server, by the way, feel free to join, um, submitted his code uh, from a pet project of his, uh, which is a hangman game. Now, of course, this is a really cool project and um, I fully endorse it. Now, the thing is, um, also thanks to Mackie for sharing his code because that's uh, really important. That's a really nice way of improving and hopefully this might this video might actually not only help Mackie but also uh, some other people which is always good. So here um, he he basically asks that you know how you know how he how can he refactor uh, his his code especially the filter words method and I uh, extracted his method into a little unit test project here filter words here it is so this is the method that he thinks is a fairly complex and granted you might look at it and be like oh yeah this is horrible no 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 everyone needs to start somewhere and it's it's actually it's decent I mean in in most other programming languages this would be perfectly fine but of course, we are in C Sharp, we're in .NET. Uh, we do have some really neat tricks that we can apply to uh, communicate this uh, behavior a little bit more. Now, uh, the first thing that I can see, and we're going to start refactoring. So the first thing that I can see is um, it, it has a lot of, uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's called cyclomatic complexity. It's basically the number of uh, possible routes or possible ways uh, the code can flow through this me method, right? So you can imagine that if you have a void foo, right? Um, this is a method that in theory has cycl cyclomatic complexity of one because there is only one way this can execute. It just goes into it, that's it. If you say, if, I don't know, like, let's say you pass in a Boolean, so if A do this, else do that, uh, that's a cycl cyclomatic complexity of two, because it can either go here, or it can go here. And if you put another if there, then it goes, that one way is the other one, a second way is the first part of the if in the first part, the third one is, right, so you, you actually, like, you expand it. So, so that's cyclomatic complexity. And if we look at this filter words method, uh, there's a, there's a, like, I'm pretty sure that the cycl cyclomatic complexity is, is going to be quite high, right? So the very first thing is that we've got this if, so it's absolutely at least two, but then we've got like another if over here. So that's going to be another two. Um, even if it, even if this, well, granted this if actually has an else. So in that case, um, it's obviously going to be another two, uh, but you might say, well, what about like um, this if that doesn't have an else branch? Uh, you could say, well, isn't that the same thing? Um, isn't you not falling into this if the same as going through it and then being on the other other side? And I'm not completely sure how uh, the complexity was calculated, so um, I couldn't tell you, but I feel like it's not the same thing because uh, the behavior is going to be different. For example, uh, these two ifs, they have a side effect of like adding something, right? So uh, not going into this if and falling immediately to this and going through both of them and, and falling into, into this add uh, method, it's not going to be the same thing. So I think the complexity is fairly high. Uh, so the first thing that we can do is apply, well, first of all, that means that uh, a complex method such as this um, is scary to touch. Why? Because, well, what if I do is equal to, well, maybe, so, so there's like an X of one, right? What if I change it to zero? How do I know that I didn't break it? Um, I probably did, but at the same time, I don't know, right? And so the first thing that we need to do is obviously understand the method, understand what it does, and write some unit tests for it. Uh, of course, we're not going to be able to cover all of them, all of the cases, but it's going to help us um, 
catch the major bugs, the major behavioral changes that uh, that, that we might introduce uh, during refactoring. So the first thing I can see, the simplest case that we might want to test is that we don't go into this giant if statement over here, so we can even collapse that, right? We don't go here. The simplest thing is if you go into the else branch, because in, in this case, it goes uh, in this else branch, it actually iterates through all of the words. Words is a list of strings here, okay? So it iterates through that. And every word that doesn't contain a character, a certain character, should be added to the filter words list and then returned. Okay, well, that's something that I can definitely uh, test, right? So let's call this, um, uh, let's say, false state, false state uh, should return, uh, ba ba ba. What would you call the, the words that do not contain the letter? Well, um, ba ba ba. I don't know what, like, words that don't contain character, right? It, it is a bit, a bit, a bit long-winded, um, but at the same time, this, this, uh, th there's a, there's a bit of a naming issue, uh, just by the, uh, the name filter words, you're not going to necessarily be able to derive what goes into it, because filter words okay, why does it get a character and a list of words and then a state and then uh, this mysterious array of integers? You, you can't know that from the context. Uh, so I would say that is, it's, it's not named as, uh, as well. Again, passing a Boolean into it probably suggests that it does two different things. And it does because you know obviously this state and the other one. So this could these could have been maybe two methods. Uh, who, who knows? Who knows? We're, we're going to get to that. So first thing is with the false state, it should return all of the words that do not contain that letter. Um, all right. Okay. Let, let's let's start. Let's make this. Uh, let's create uh, our sample data. So for example, we're just going to uh, let's start with the uh, with the character, right? So let's have a character. Uh, well character C, let's say, uh, let's have it be uh, capital A. Okay, well then, let's have the list of words, let's call it words, not works, um, make a new list of strings over here, it's gonna be fine, we don't need to do that, because we're just gonna literally declare the, the list of worlds, world, mm -hmm, the list of words, uh, we're gonna make a literal out of that, uh, and let's have a word, for example, A, 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 <laughs> right? That one obviously contains that, so I expect that it's not going to be in it. B, 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 uh, it should be in it. C, 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 that uh, also should be in it. Then something like A, 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 which shouldn't be in it. I'm just making it interesting. Uh, and then B, B, A, right? That should be in it. Okay, that's just, uh, obviously you, you would want to have this test maybe be a bit more expensive and try different things, uh, try more uh, but of course, for the brevity of this tutorial, which probably is super long anyways, uh, I'm just going to omit that. Uh, then the state, uh, which is going to be uh, false, it has to be false. And the integer positions, which defaults to null, so it is an optional parameter, we're not going to provide it. So that's the arrange. Now we have all, everything that we need. Okay, so let's act. So it's going to have actual. Uh, it's going to be the result, more like we can call it result. Um, and let's call filter words. And we're going to pass in character C, words list words, the state. Nope, that's a string. The state and then the integer array is optional. Okay, so in this case, what do we assert about it? Well, let's assert um, that Let's start by asserting uh, the count, how many items should be in there. So I expect that it's going to be what, like, so, so two of them should be removed, so three should remain. So the result.count should be three, right? Because it gets, it should get rid of this because it contains the letter A. And it should get rid of this because it also contains the cap the letter capital or the character capital A, 
right? That's why this stays here because it's lowercase a. All right. Um, and then, of course, I would ideally make sure that uh, these items are correct. So, for example, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of going to couple a little to the actual to particular data set, but it doesn't matter. So I I would suppose that the, the uh, words with index of one, which is the second one, this one should be equivalent to result zero. So the first one in the result array or the result list. Um, then, of course, and I'm going to do that for the two others. So I expect that the uh, third third item in this uh, words list is actually going to be the second thing in, in this words because it should um, preserve the order. And then I'm also going to assert that this is that one. All right, cool. So let's give it a go. Let's actually uh, pop open a new terminal over here. And let's do dot net test. I'm gonna have a drink. Oh, wait, hold up. We don't have a solution file. You can't do that without a solution file. Uh, oh yeah, playground. I called it playground. Dot net test. Okay. Sorry, I was drinking. Um, as I said, I'm a little bit sick, so sorry for this. So, obviously this test passes, um, so that's good, so that's good. So now we know how this works. Um, I'm thinking we could perhaps um, fall into like a, uh, let's say, so this was a sunny day test, it's what's called a sunny day test. Uh, what makes it a sunny day is that everything works, everything seems to be fine, and we expect an actual result. There could be something called a rainy day test. Uh, so, for example, what if the words list is um, uh, null? What if, uh, you know, what if some other parts are null or, or empty or any any other weird exception-y type of thing? Uh, I can tell you that if the, if the words array is going to be null, then this is most definitely going to throw a null reference exception. And that might be something that we might, you know, not want to, want, might want to um, prevent. And we could do that by first thing first, making sure that words is not an empty array, but, or, or sorry, a uh, null. Uh, just to be completely sane, uh, let's just uh, have one more one more test and that's false state no words should return empty list right so we don't have any words it's an empty list okay like this um, that if we execute should result in an empty list call it empty. Uh, we might want to also assert that it's not null, that sort of thing. Uh, depends, depends. So sometimes this might not be wanted, sometimes it is. Uh, but yeah, let's just be safe. And you might be saying, well, Peter, you spent, you surely spend a lot of time, um, you know, writing tests for a method that you don't necessarily understand. And it's like, it's precisely because I don't understand the method why I need this these tests. I mean, fortunately, it's not coupled to anything uh, that would be hard to replace or hard to mock. In your real life day to day programming, you might, uh, you know, stumble upon a uh, method that uses um, instances of other classes or some complex database context object, uh, that sort of stuff, uh, which would be very difficult to test. Fortunately, this is an example of a method that is very easy to test because it only uses .NET stuff and it has a clear output. So, uh, yeah, so, so I write these tests to protect myself uh, when I'm doing refactoring. So, so that's the else branch, right? Now let's uh, cover the... <laughs> The if branch, which which is going to be um, more complex. Um, so the first thing in this if is a for loop. 
So this for loop iterates through uh, this positions array. And immediately I can tell you that if the positions defaults to null and you try to access the length property of null, that is going to be a so-called null reference exception. Um, and I'm not just going to say that, I'm actually also going to prove it. Um, and that's basically uh, true state null positions should throw null ref. So basically this is uh, irrelevant, so, so the uh, character is irrelevant, irrelevant, the words list is also irrelevant, the state needs to be true in this case, and I will assert that it throws a null reference exception when you decide to uh, by the way, this is a uh, this is called an action literal. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, I suggest you uh, check out a link in the description to my GitHub page, uh, a page called Covered Topics, which lists all of the things that I've covered in my tutorials and gives you like a links with timestamps. So hey, find the uh, what are actions and action literals uh, in there, and just just feel free to watch that if you're interested. And, and so I, I'm going to assert that it's going to throw that if I try to filter words with uh, the character C, the empty words list, uh, the, the true state. Uh, and of course, well, I might specifically say that it's null, even though it defaults to null. Sure. Uh, someone might change that. Um, yeah, that seems fine. And of course, I'm going to uh, run all of the tests again. Hopefully, the third one should pass, and it does. So, so that means that indeed, if you pass in a third, uh, the, the null uh, parameter here, and the state is true, then uh, it indeed results in a null reference exception. Uh, and that depends. I might want to do that, but maybe, maybe I don't. So let's change this test. Well, or maybe we could. So actually. I don't want to, I'm going to back back up a little bit. We are going to save that, but not before we have a full suite of unit tests covering the actual behavior. So um, we're going to just write a little a comment over here, a little to-do comment for ourselves. Let's say um, fix null ref uh, when the suite uh, is complete. Or we might actually let's remember. I'll remember. I don't like to put in co to do comments because you forget about them and then they get committed. <sighs> All right. So so that's the first thing. So we iterate over the positions array, and uh, that's the first thing that happens in this. So let's just collapse this a little. And that's actually the only thing. So it iterates through that. The simplest simplest thing that we can test is. It's actually fairly trivial because it's going to be more like this test. And that's uh, when you have a true state, true state no positions should return empty list, right? Because you fall into this, this part over here, you iterate through the positions, which is nothing. So nothing get, happens and then you fall and return a filtered words, which is the new list. All right, so this is going to be the state needs to be true. Uh, this is irrelevant. Yeah, now, of course, this cannot be null. This has to be, let's say, a new integer array of zero elements. That's fine. And of course, the uh, result shouldn't be null and it should be empty. So let's give this a go. And I'm going to have a drink and it works. I am super sorry that, you know, I do these weird things when I'm sick, uh, but I don't know, I don't have any good excuse. We're doing it live, kinda. No editing. Hopefully this is gonna be useful to someone. <laughs> so okay, so we've got that, right? So, so this is the simplest case. What is the second next simplest case? Well, let's, let's uncollapse this. All right, we've got an if here, so let's collapse that. We've got an else here. So now I have an option, right? It's either 
uh, the, the first... Oh, okay, so we have a special case for the first part of the iteration. So we have this a special case for the first element in this positioned uh, array. Why? Well, because it starts th this for loops uh, this for loop starts at zero and it iterates uh, through the you know length of this of this this positions array and it has a special case if uh, the i which is the iterator is a zero so it only have gonna ha it is only going to happen in this for loop the first iteration and then it's always going to fall into the else branch all right so I say that let's keep it um, Let's keep it like this. Let's start with the case where we only have a single element in this positions array and therefore it is only going to execute once and therefore it's only going to fall into this first part where we have an where we have a for each. Okay, so now the simplest thing, the simplest possible option over here is that well words this list could be empty and therefore nothing really happens and I should still get an empty list. All right, so let's do that. That should be fairly trivial because it's basically the very same test. So true state uh, one position no words should return empty list. So the state is true. Uh, there are no words and we should have a single position. So I'm going to initialize a new integer array with one element in it. And it should still return an empty and not null collection and an empty list. And it does. Okay, cool. So that's the simplest case. Now, the second thing is, well, now I have an option. I can either go here and test the second iteration of the same thing with no words. So if we don't have any words, and this happens for the first time. Okay, well, and then it goes uh, for the second iteration. It creates this temporary list. And then for each word in filtered words, which is the resulting thing, it's actually going to... Um, re Whoa, hold up. It's going to do something for, for each. And then it's going to replace the filtered words list with the temporary list. So this is doing... Uh, some operations on top of the the words that we've already filtered. This is where the complexity ramps up very very quickly, right? Because um, these these names aren't necessarily ideal. The whole concept of like filtering words doesn't make too much sense. Even when we know, so even when we have context about the application, we know that it's a hangman. You know that a character is probably a character that the uh, the player guesses, right? So I say maybe E. But then the words list is a bit more complex because you would you would think that there is a single word in a hang, hanged man, right? Game. But unfortunately, in this case, there's apparently a list of them. Okay, well, then the state tells you absolutely nothing, nothing at all. And then the uh, positions in like positions array of integer I mean who, that's like I mean you could I don't know I don't know what it is maybe it could be the positions or the letters that the user already or the characters that the user already had had guessed but I mean you don't know this would be something like uh, guest positions right or something or maybe this shouldn't be an integer array but rather a character array and it should contain the characters that the user has guessed but I mean that's beside the point here uh, let's actually delve into the deepest part of this first for each just so we have it covered so in this case we're going to have some words we're gonna have a word in it and of course this feels a little bit like reverse engineering if you think about it and it is kinda uh, because the code isn't written um, you know and this is not bashing. This is just that the code isn't written necessarily for other people to easily understand. And good code would state its intent. It would tell you what it's doing. It would, um, I think this would even, like as like a tiny little step, this would even like benefit from like some comments. 
Um, but it's like a, it, it's a band-aid. It's just a it's just a quick fix. It's not ideal. Ideally, the code itself would explain it. But if it can't, then yeah, I comment it would still be better than this, right? But it's just we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So in this, when we have when we actually have some words, then for each one of those words, we're going to iterate through its letters. Okay. And then uh, there's an if here. Uh, and that's if x, which is this iterator over here, which by the way kind of tells you, uh, which kind of tells you which letter of the word this is. So I think this should not have been a for each. This should have been a for loop. But I mean, who who knows? Maybe I'm just. Does he use the word? He does. But I mean. You could still, well, you still have the word reference. Whatever, whatever. No worries. No worries here. <laughs> uh, where does letter come from again? Oh, no, sorry. It's declared. I am beginning to, like, lose it. As we go, and this is, by the way, another interesting thing. As you go deeper and deeper in context, you're starting to lose it. And you're like, when I'm in, inside a for each, inside a for each, inside an if, inside a for, inside an if. And the complexity is so what it's very hard to keep the whole like state machine in your brain at once. Um, but all right, uh, even then we iterate through the letters of each word of the first word that is, and yeah, and once we we think about it a little bit one and it is this is also a bit of a yoda syntax it's like oh if if x equals positions of i right normally you would say hey if the you know if the positions of i is x uh, Yo yoda like you, you know you know yoda from uh, star wars right he always talks in this reverse order it's like if red is the color right instead of if the color is red um it used to be uh, this. This was really used in like uh, JavaScript, so, so that you cannot assign to uh, constants or literals. But whatever, sir. I'm just rambling again. So let's think about it. So we've got an X here. Uh, we and we compare it to positions of I. Positions is that array that we pass, and I is um, this. Ooh, I is zero. So okay, so it's always taking the first letter. So it's saying, hey, um, sorry, the first integer of this position's array. And it's like, what? Um, all right, yeah, sure. Let's say the positions is like, two, the first could be like two. And so it goes through, I need to kind of draw this out. Right, because we can assume that we have like a letter like apple, right? And then we have a positions array and we can assume that the positions of i which is zero, so it's Oh you have okay, never mind. Um This is always gonna be zero, my dude. You could have just said zero. Um no no worries. So the positions of zero is like maybe gonna be like, I don't know, like um Four, th four, three. I don't know. I don't. I don't who, who are you? <laughs> All right. So it's gonna be like let's say four, right? So what it's gonna do is it's gonna compare if x, which starts at one, and it compares it to four. So it's it it asks, is one four? It's gonna say no, no, it's not. So it falls through. It 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 adds to it, and and that was for a, right? Then it goes and asks, is two four? It's gonna say no. Is three four? No. And then it goes here and it says, is four four? And it's gonna say, yeah, absolutely, four is four, my dude. Happy days, we go into the if. And this is weird because you can see that by proxy, by like this weird magic, we landed on an L in Apple by doing that little, you know, is one four uh, sort of comparison, right? Um. Either way, we ended up with an L in Apple, and we take the letter, which is going to be L, and he asks, hey, um, is L the character that you guessed? 
I guess, well, uh, the character that you passed into this method. And if it is, then you're going to add it to the filtered words. Okay, so this hints, this hints at like something. The first thing is, um, the positions of I, in which case, in, in this case, positions of zero, the positions of I is the position, the, the character at that position in that word, right? But he also doesn't want to overflow. So if the uh, word was app and the position was four, you don't want to get the four, the, the sort of yeah fourth or the third indexed uh, character because that would be index out of range exception. So he iterates through it. It's not an ideal approach, but it's fine. Uh, all right, so so you end up with a with a particular character that you're guessing in this case. Whew, that's gonna be a uh, pretty wild. Uh, but let's. Uh, I think I'm gonna be able to write a test for that. So let's end up with a little. Uh, false first, right? So true state, one position, one word should return uh, one word wrong Char character should return empty list. Whew. Okay, Whew. this is this is getting tense. So you've got the letter A, let's say, sure, or maybe let's do the well, yeah, right, the letter A. Um, you've got a list of words. We've got, we should have one word and the word should be something like, um, word. Of course, word doesn't contain a, that's why it's wrong char. Uh, the state is true. And it means that we should have one, uh, sorry, one, uh, we should have an index there. And let's say that we want a new integer array of like, um, with like one, I guess, maybe. Uh, maybe let's test the second word, second character. And I'm, do, you, do you have to do that? I forgot. No, you have to. Yeah. Because it sometimes can actually guess. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent. That used to work, maybe? I don't know. I don't remember. But that was like a simplified thing for construction of arrays. Whatever. Uh, sue me. Or don't. I uh, Please don't. Um, okay, so we're guessing the, the second word, right? It should be O, but we're guessing it's A, right? So we're going to... Sh we should get... Yeah, nothing. Um, this is not a thing. Sorry, bud. Uh, and if we run this, maybe we were wrong. So let's see. And it works. So this is correct. This is correct. Now we're gonna test the, the good case, right? This is the same thing, but correct. So instead of wrong char, we're gonna say right char. And the right char for this is O, right? If you guessed O and the second the second uh, character is O, then this should uh, give you O. This should not be an empty. This should be, uh, should return a list with word. So we would assume that it, there is a single element in this result array. And also you would expect that it is the word, the, the first word, right? You would expect it to be the word. And so let's see if that is correct. And if not, then we have to debug. Okay, so that, that seems to work. All right, that, that seems we, we've got it. Now, just to be sure, let's convert this into a theory and let's uh, change this up. Let's have inline data and pass in a character, any character, like for example, X, and then a word. Uh, well, it's not going to be just the word, but then the word, which is going to be something like AA, X, A, 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 and then the index, uh, the, the position. So it's going to be like three. Uh, then we're going to take this as a character C. Uh, then it's going to be the, the, the string word and the end pause. Uh, for position. So C is declared by that. The word is going to be word here and the position is going to be pause. So in this case, you have to also spell theory correctly. 
Now, if you do that, uh, then everything should still pass. Uh, granted, the X is... Oh, actually, it doesn't. That's weird. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happened. Um, I need to expand this a little. Oh, actually, you know what? We can use this little button that I never use. So it says, no, actually, it's not there because um, it wasn't empty. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, I am dumb. This is uh, the wrong char. Sorry, I was doing the correct one. So let's say that, oh, big O is that, that thing. I was just testing the wrong case. Okay, cool. Uh, but I was able to figure it out. That's important. And let's just make like these, this many. So let's test that if the, you know, if the, um, if the word is like A and you check for X in the like 20, 20th position, then that should still return an empty list. Uh, what if there is just like K and you test for X? Well, that looks very similar. So let's go with like M and you test it as the first position. Um, then let's just basically say hello and then maybe like world. I'm uh, just trying to get it a bit more. Uh, we're, we're testing the correct thing, but at the wrong position, maybe right very close. Or we're testing capital D at the end of, so there's one, two, three, four, five, so fifth, right? Now it should all fail or fail. This should all pass, but yes. Okay, so we've got correct. Got a correct theory. Okay, we're starting to starting to test this correctly. Now this is going to pay off because once we we refactor the whole thing, uh, we're going to see uh, how it how it, you know if everything if the behavior is preserved really. And it is very po it is very much possible that as we do that, uh, we're actually going to introduce a bug, right? Because our testing is not comprehensive because we didn't write the tests before the method. Right, but the thing is here, we could come up with uh, we we could this way reverse engineer the behavior of that method, and then we can maybe even rewrite the whole thing using test driven development, so that we maybe see what the difference is and how uh, Mackie I think it was um, could have arrived at a at a different solution, maybe more ideal. Who knows? So we're gonna do the same thing basically here. Uh, we're going to convert this into a theory. Uh, we're going to use these um, inline parameters. So that's declared. Should be word. And this should be a pause. Very good. So we're testing that the third is, uh, is an X. That should work, right? Uh, let's just test it real quick. The third position is an X. Okay, cool. Um, then let's test something very simple, like uh, just a capital A. You guess an A, and you say that it's at the first uh, at the first position. Should also pass. Another thing would be like hello, and you you say oh is the last one, which is one, two, three, four, five, five. Um, then maybe let's test like um, second position, maybe. Okay. Uh, in general, this probably works. If this passes, then I'm fairly confident that the behavior works. All right, so so this is good. That's good. That means that this whole you you could think about it, think about this method as like, oh, so this, so here, this part of the application, the, the, sorry, of of the method, it adds all of the words that contain the letter at a specific position but it's not it's not just that because this tests for the first positions um element so for the first position integer in that integer array and of course it does go through all of the words so this is interesting uh, because it also enables us to immediately test the the next thing and that's this for each. So we actually, so what we did test is we tested this for each letter in a word. We did that, uh, but we didn't necessarily test for each word in words. So we need to have this as a collection, right? And um, basically test the same thing. 
Now, there sh I'm just gonna like assume that there's... Let's think about it. Let's think about this because the, the result now will be a bit different. So actually let's make it uh, a fact now. And let's say true state, uh, one position, many words, right character, should return list with words. So there's no, there are no parameters. So let's say that the character is X. Uh, let's say that the words are A A X X A A X X X, right? And you would assume that you would get two if if the third if sorry if the position I should probably do that pause is three. So if the position is three, you would as, uh, you, you would expect it to get the, these two words. This would match and this would also match. So in this case, let's assert that result.count is actually two, that there are two words. And also, that um, AAX is in there and that XXX is in there. Tentacion, I don't know, I'm sorry. All right, so this passes, so that means that it does work for that. Let's actually have a rainy day test version of this. Um, true state, one position, many, and then this is the wrong character, should return empty list. I'm just going to copy uh, the null, not null and empty assertion over here. And so we say that nothing actually contains, um, we have that character in there. So you didn't guess it right, basically. Okay, cool. So this this seems to work. So we did actually. So now we have tested the the whole for each word in words, and then this whole thing is tested implicitly because it just works for the first uh, thing. Okay, but what if you have multiple positions, right? Granted, we all we we now worked with uh, an array where there was just a single position. So. <sighs> If that happens, then we fall into this else branch. And that basically means... Ooh, yikes. <laughs> yeah, it's this part. Um, so so for the next once, let's say, for, for the second um, positions element and further, it's going to work with this temporary list. So it creates this temporary list and then it goes through yet again all of the words in words so so it kind of like does this it feels like basically this uh, but it goes through filtered words which is an interesting choice because that means that if you match a word before in the very first iteration if you match the first word it's going to go through that word alone. So let's say I have a couple of words. I have apple and banana. Apple and banana. <laughs> I don't know. Should have, should have picked better. I have a dog and a cat. <laughs> yeah. So let's say you ask about the first position. The first integer in positions is one. So we ask about the first character. And in Dogo, it's D, all right? So let's say you did indeed guess D, right? So you, so it, you fall into this first, asking about the first thing, and you go through all of the words. So you go through, through Dogo, you go through Katto, but only Dogo matches, all right? Um, because that that's what you guessed for the first position. So in that filtered words, you get... You, you only get doggo, you don't get katos. And then you just go through like positions like another like positions. The second one, which maybe could be like, 
like, like the second one. So, so it, it was one at first, and we guessed D, but then it's maybe the second element in this could be like, I don't know, like two the, for the second thing. But, but the guess is still D, which is slightly weird, but all right. In this case, it goes through only doggo. It only goes through the stuff that matched for the first thing. I think this... I think this... I think this program cheats at Hanged Man. That's basically it. It's not guessing it. It's trying to figure out which which words actually match. It's a cheat program. You're cheating. You're cheating at Hanged Man. How dare you? <laughs> I love it. So if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that, that does... So you have the positions that you did indeed guess, right? Question mark. So so let's say you have an E at like two positions, right? You have letters that have, uh, sorry, words that have E as the first position and then E as the third position. You first go through all of the words that you've got, which could be a dictionary. Those could be all of the words. Um, find all of them that actually start with an E. That's the first iteration, right? That's this. And then you, and then from those that you found, you find all of those that have e at another position, right? That's basically what this should do. And let's confirm this real quick, because you've got a temporary list. You go through all of the filtered words, which is basically all of the ones that match. And for all of the the letters, you go through the positions of i, which is the second position. And again, you do the whole shebang one more time. So with the, the whole X iteration. Um, you kind of guess if that is right. You find the right position again. And um, if it matches, then you get then it gets added. <laughs> this is terrible. But all right, I can prove it. I can prove it. <laughs> I this could be written so much simpler, and I mean I'm, I'm not doing it like to laugh or anything, but it's it's really I just I just get a kick out of figuring shit out. It's really fun, and I mean if you guys if you guys don't get a kick out of figuring shit out on your own, then I don't know if programming is for you, because some of you might have figured it out much sooner than I did, and pro you probably did, and but that's that's not what matters, right? Um, but let's 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 see. So true state. Many positions. Um, one word. Yeah, one word. Right character should return list list with word. So let's assume that it has X, but not as just like pause one. Now I'm gonna actually extrapolate this array. Pass is going to become an array. Okay. So I'm going to assume that the first and third position, th the first and third character is an X. X dot X. That should match. X, X, X doesn't match. Or X dot dot should not match. Oh, this should be more, more obvious, right? So this matches because it has first and third character, the X. This doesn't match because, well, it does match the first one, but it doesn't the second one, so it doesn't. So it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Because it over... After it does that, it actually overwrites the, the filtered words list for the first one. So not gonna be not, it's not, it should not be null, and there should be a single element. I don't need the, the null check, I think, with the single one. Do I do that? If I do that, then I should, but yeah, okay. So this should pass. The 17th test should pass. And it does. Okay, so that's indeed what it does. Um, let's have the, the rainy day test uh, again, just to be very sure. So true state many, uh, so true state many positions, one word, um, and let's say wrong char should return 
empty list. All right, so we have this whole empty, not null empty, yep, this, uh huh. And in this case, we're just gonna guess, um, we're gonna guess x, but, and let's say the first and second position. X, it's, so it should start with xx. However, um, there should be no match. So x, o, o, it's not a match. O, x, o is not a match. O, x, x is also not a match. And let's just, just you know, just to be a bit more interesting, let's see, da, 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 I don't know. So this should pass, unless I stated something incorrectly. Sorry for blowing my nose, I think I just don't think that's uh, professional to do in a video, but eh, whatever. I ain't professional, I'm just passionate. <laughs> All right, um, should have done it with dogos and katos, I think that was more interesting. Um, all right, so, so that works. So in this case, we went through uh, this pattern, which means including the first thing. And that actually concludes the whole thing. I think now we have, um, we did indeed test um, the behavior of this method. Now, uh, there is something that we can do to make sure or to verify that we that we did actually test everything. And that we can simply break it in certain spots. We can just do something interestingly wild and um, and make sure that the tests break. So for example, I can say here when it is equal to zero, uh, I can say not equal to zero. Like, like, just like, just like that, it could be that insane. And if I do that, tests should break because if all of the tests still pass, then this is not something that I test. So this is called mutation testing, but I'm doing it manually. Okay, so that's obviously correct. Um, so now, you know, all of the te uh, so six tests failed because of that change. So that means good. That means my tests cover that thing, right? So what if I start from um, Zero. I think that that actually should not make a difference. Actually, you know what it does. Is that out of range or what is it? Should return empty list. True state. One position. One word. Right character. Should return. Uh, what happened? Oh, the collection was expected to contain a single element, but it was empty. Okay, so that means we test it. We make sure. Oh, right. Yeah, okay, of course, because this is one based, not zero based. Okay, cool. So that means that that's great. We test it. That's very good. That's very good. Um, yes. So let's let's move into this else branch. Actually, yeah, let, let's move into this else branch. And again, I'm pretty sure if we did the same thing, it's still zero based. So that's fine. Yeah, um, there are tools for mutation testing that do it for you. Uh, so for example, this, right, does not contain, I can change it to contains. And that should break a test, and it does. So that's good. All right, so that means pretty, pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, so now that we've got that, we can start refactoring. Why? Because we know that whatever we do, if we run the test and they still pass, happy day, chappy days. All right, so this is the refactoring. So first thing first, this if else branch, um, the else branch is disproportionately smaller and it's right before a return. We can do something called a return first. So if we take this, the else, put it way in the at the beginning, might even do it here, paste it over here, do this for each here. And so, so what we do is we go through words and select all of the ones that does not contain the character and add them, and then we immediately return them. So this, that could be written as return words um, where uh, the word the word w um, does not contain a character, right? Now this is using link system link. And this uh, expects us to return a list, but we're trying to return i enumerable, so we just have to convert it into a to list. 
uh, it might be interesting, it might be better to maybe consider using I enumerable instead of a list as a return type, but at the same time, it's not that big of a deal to just convert it. Uh, we should probably, in order to keep the application working, we should um, make sure that the signature, the, the let's uh, call it a contract, is not changed. Only the implementation should change. All right, so if we do that, and that's the very first thing that we do, um, then obviously that's not going to work because you immediately return. And the this is based on a state. So what we can do here is wrap it into a not state. So if, if the state is indeed false, then this is what happens. But other than that, we don't do put an else there because there is a return in that if. Whatever falls into that if returns, right? So that means that we don't, we not only don't need that else branch, we in fact don't even need the flipping if. <laughs> I don't know what that accent was, but yeah, I'm sticking with it. This is my signature accent now. The flipping if man. I don't know. All right, so in if we did, did everything correctly, hopefully, I mean, ideally, and it still passes. So we did not actually introduce a change. Now, the thing is, if you have that, we could probably omit the uh the body of it um because it's just a return if it wasn't a return then i might be careful about that but it's seriously just a return so let's just make sure that the body didn't break anything and it didn't so it's very good it's very happy um and so let's continue with the refactoring you can see that i am i am i can make bold like bold changes like changing that ripping that part of the code from the very bottom, putting it on top, just inverting a couple of things and using link. That's a scary ass change. That's very fucking scary. And if I did not have the tests, that would be insane. It would be insane. Like, what are you do? How do you know it? What? But of course, I've got a test suite and I'm fairly confident. I'm not 100% confident in it, but I'm fairly confident that it worked. Um, I could have done more proper uh, mutation testing to make sh to be able to like really trust it but of course alas um i don't know i don't know what i was about to say i just i, I didn't yikes <laughs> all right so the next thing so this is the whole you know oh whatever if if there's like a false state so we don't care about some false state that just like witchcraft voodoo to us and uh, now we care about the whole katto doggo type of stuff right so the first thing is um, we're doing the whole filtered words. And so now the problem is we've got a list of words and we've got a guest character and positions that should match. However, the positions are one based, not zero based. Um, basically an array normally is referenced by an element at, and then you, it's a zero base. So zero is the first one. However, our positions are actually one for the first element. So in fact, I was thinking, I could maybe just outright rewrite that. Um, it might not be an ideal approach, uh, but let's just give it a go. I'm just gonna just quickly try to jog something, and if it is uh, if it's more complex, then I'm just gonna uncomment it and just go with a smaller steps. But I feel like there is some. I can. Can you taste that? It's like I can already taste the link query. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what is this? I am. This channel is going to hell very quickly. Uh, I am incredibly sorry for everything I'm doing. <laughs> All right, but we're having fun, right? I also have a fever and rant too much. You're like, Peter, shut the fuck up and just fucking write the code. I don't know. I'm just stalling because I don't know what the code is. <laughs> um, it's hard to code uh, on this spot. All right, so let's let's go for it. Uh, the the algorithm that uh, Mackie went with is oh so I'm just gonna filter uh, the first the, the all of the words that actually go with that state and then go with something else but no let's actually do it in a in a maybe different maybe a bit of a different approach so what I'm gonna do is I'll just write like my ideal uh, return statement something that would be so magical if it worked uh, it probably doesn't exist but of course I'm just gonna like implement it later so what I'm gonna do is I'm I just want I just want the words list because I want certain words which words do I want well I want the words where and there there isn't a flipping predicate that would be able to co cover that so I could write that 
and there's some Windows pop-ups right there. So I'm going to write this predicate, right? And of course, this predicate needs the word. So where the word W does something. And this needs to be a method that returns a true. But it's going to be a bit more complex to return true. Why? Well, because it not only needs to match that, uh, you know, it, it not only needs to match the first thing, it needs to match all of them. And so in a way, I can start with something. So, so I can start with this, right? If there is a position number that is more than or equal to the length of W, then it is impossible to be a match, right? For example, I don't think I test that, and that's a scary thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure I should have tested it. Uh, but basically, if all of the, if, if yeah, so, so if I've got words, and for example, the word is cat, <laughs> and I ask for the 37th um, character, then obviously that's the cat is never going to match. It doesn't even have 37 characters, right? So this is what I'm doing first. So at first, if basically if basically the word length, the word length is more than or, e or equal to the highest position, this might not be as ideal, right? I'm probably going to refactor it further, but the positions that, uh, oh, max, I'm just going to quietly read about this returns the maximum value in a sequence of okay sure that's really good yeah sure max um right then it's just just no just no <laughs> I, I literally wrote no as a boolean literal uh i meant to write false okay so if um <coughs> sorry i'm dying so if if the if the word does if the word doesn't even have that many characters then it's an automatic no please don't include that it can't match but then here comes magic um the word needs to pass this little test and that's for each of those positions <laughs> uh is there an l an, an all so positions dot all yes there we go ah beautiful so i'm going to invert it I'm going to return true only if all of the positions match this little this little inner predi predicate here, right? The pause is a position. Uh, I don't have pause redeclared, do I? Okay, so this is just, just complaining because it needs to return to Boolean, right? Yeah. Okay, so this will pass only if all of the positions uh, match this, and that's w which is the word which i could just write word just to be just to be a very good boy <laughs> it's terribly complex but we're gonna do something about that no worries so only if the word with an index of position mine oh what are you doing entry point not found except listen why are you like this why am i like this I'm getting progressively more insane as this video goes on. So if the if the character at the position minus one, why minus one? Well, because the position is actually um, uh, written as like a one based, not zero based, right? And indexers of the of the word are actually zero based. So I need to convert them. So I'm just going to do a bit of a minus one there, a, a switcheroo of some sort. And I'm. I can just say equals, just like Mackie did, just to be like, yeah, whatever. So if it is that character. Now, in this case, I don't need the body because this is an except, uh, a, an expression bodied method. I can just do this. Uh, apparently I cannot. Let's let's see let's see what Visual Studio thinks about it. Can I implicitly convert generic ionumerable string to collection? Okay, well, can I just maybe put it back? <laughs> Um, and maybe do a return. It's gonna still complain the very same thing, but okay. So, okay. Ah, okay. Two list. It took me a while. Sorry. Okay, and now I can be all smart and put it as a one-liner. So the issue there was, it was just complaining about the whole expression being an ionumerable and not a list. Um, 
So, so in theory, this is it. In theory. And I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's wrong. And it, we'll see. We'll see. Let's see. And it, okay, no. Actually, we did not do something. There's an issue there. Uh, because nine tests failed. And I can check out what the tests are to help, to maybe help me a little bit. This looks like a, a bit of an exception. Index out of range exception. Oh, okay. Expected to contain single element, but was empty. Expected two, but it was zero. Okay, that, that seems that seems like it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. At least I've got the test, you know, that's important. Um, there is an index out of range, which is probably why I don't like what's going on. But it, it doesn't, so it doesn't work when there's a single position, right? And there's just like a word that can, oh, okay. I said higher than or equal, right? Yeah, that shouldn't be it. It is a zero based, I'm sorry. Okay, that's better. Only four tests are failing at this point. Well, because obviously, right, only when it's bigger than the length of that. I'm sorry, it's just me being stupid, stupid. All right, let, let's, let's see about these index out of range. Um, what was the test, by the way? So it was true state, one position, this, basically this test, right? Like, I'm not going to read it. It's too much words, too many words. So this isn't, this isn't passing. So let's take a look at it. So we are guessing an X, right? We're saying that it is as the third position. Oh. Oh, for each word. Well, hold up. Hold, hold the Reno. Okay, okay, so so we're guessing it falls here because this is actually out of range. Um, I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Let's think Reno about it. So for each for all of the words, when the length is more than pos more than the ma okay question mark. I did an oopsie here because. <laughs> what, what am I doing? When the word is longer than the maximum one return falls? What? What? No. No, it's the other way. Isn't, that, isn't it the other way around? You were probably screaming like, Peter, gee, you were stupid. And I'm like, no, stop. You no, know you. Okay, so there's one test failing. Unfortunately, it's... A, well, hold up. No, no, no. There's one test failing, and that's this. True state now should throw null ref. We fixed the null ref, basically. Um, okay, so, yeah, uh, as like a weird little coincidence, is we fixed an issue there. Uh, there was a null reference exception that we e expected it to throw. Mm, that's no longer happening. So I, when I said, oh, we're going to fix it, we kind of implicitly fixed it. All right. Um, then, no, then... So we're gonna run it and hopefully this should work and it does okay so that means that we do not need this and the whole method boils down to this wild concoction of like return link whatever and you're like peter this is less lines of code first of all i would say great observation person um but also Peter, this is not readable. This is fucking insane. I don't know Link. I don't know Max or whatever. So we're going to translate it. We're going to do a, a refactoring called method extraction. So the first thing... Uh, let, let's take a look at this because this is probably the most um, complex one. So for example, here it says if the word length uh, is less than the maximum of the position. If, yeah, so... Uh, we can we can extract this. We can take this, right click on it, hit refactor that probably isn't there in like Visual Studio Code. Uh, normally we would hit refactor and then hit um, extract a method. Mm, okay, well, I'm gonna do it manually because Visual Studio Code. Um, let's have it private. Let's have it static because there's nothing that, re that, that you know, we really care about. Uh, return bool 
sorry, I said static, it's not because we don't care about it, it's static because uh, it doesn't actually reference anything in this class. Um, returns a boolean, and let's say, hmm, um, pa pa pa, word, if, so, so think of it in English, right? I, I'm thinking something like, if word would result in an index out of bounds, of course, that would be very uh, wordy. So I'm thinking if um, string contains positions, but it's not like it's not implicitly understanding that like we do not necessarily understand that you know that's what's happening it's like if string contains positions hmm you could probably misinterpret it as i'm gonna give you positions hmm well has positions yeah if string has positions has cars at if string has cars at right if the string has characters at these positions because there is a element at and you understand that oh okay so it gives you um it gives you uh, the element at something but it is uh, in this case it is one based uh, sorry, it is expected to be zero based, but in our case, it is one based. So it's weird. It's going to be a bit of a an oofers McDoofers, but don't don't think about it too much. It's better than nothing. We can rename it. We can rename it any time of the day. So we're going to say, um, you pass in a string, uh, the 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 word, let's say, or text, um, and then you give it a positions. And what it's going to do is it's basically going to do this, right? And you're like, yeah, Peter, but is that is that really needed? Did you just, what did you do? I mean, that didn't really do that much. And in fact, you're hiding a trivial implementation uh, behind uh, like this complex thing, right? In fact, you're just, you know, you're just stupid. And I hate you, unsubscribed. Um, I cry every time. That, that's my that's my argument <laughs> no again uh, this is this is all about readability really um, this reads a little bit better than this because you would need to figure it out you would be like text length is less than positions dot max so max value of the positions array so that's let's say like three and then if the text length is less than that, Right it, before, and I think it's implicitly faster to read and understand. Probably not for everyone. There is probably a better name, and please, please, please come up with a better name. Uh, but still, it's probably better to to read. String has characters at word positions. Right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who stop <laughs> I'm just giving you ideas not the best ideas but I'm giving you ideas so let's think about this now now the whole all whatever blah 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 we can abstract that into something very very plain English uh, and that's gonna be string has oh no <laughs> care character at positions string contains at positions if you say string contains it's implicitly a character so I'm not putting care in there in fact um, you just put in a character that it contains and then the positions
What? <laughs> no, hold up, hold up. Um, yeah, I wanted the other way around, <laughs> lol. Um, yeah, I did that in the in the reverse order, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna... Mm -hmm. All of the words... <laughs> uh, no, stop. String contains at position. Ooh. So let's put a string and then a position. Oh, why am I abstracting it? It doesn't really make much sense. In fact, this isn't too needed. But I mean, I if so, okay, so private static, and this is gonna be I enumerable or. Yeah, I enumerable, mm -hmm. enumerable of string. I enumerable of string, um, a returning a method that that is named something very uh, interesting, and that's like get all words. Oh no, that contain a uh, flip car at positions. Get all words that contain character at positions. And you need huh, a words list. You need ca the character. And then the positions. Just to be consistent. I know, and again, it's like, Peter, you're making it complex, but maybe, maybe this actually hide, like, have you ever thought about the fact that this might actually hide complexity instead of add it? I don't know. I am not that smart. What am I, question mark? I am again... Oh, right, yes, of course. No, it's fine. I'm just... No, what? <laughs> this is for a single word. What are you doing? Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. Shush, 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 shush. Word contains... So this is not a word, this is a string. String contains car at positions. So I was right the first time. I'm just very confused. No... No, don't worry. I'm. Why are you laughing at me? This is this guy. See, this is why I don't like you. Stop being that way. I was just looking at the whole all, and I'm like, what do you mean all? Like all is a scary concept. Don't don't do that. Um, character is C, so I'm just gonna character. Mhm. Mm Ugh. Uh, what's the result of this? Bool. Oh yeah, bool. Um, yeah, this is a uh, boolean. I forgot that this is in like a where clause. Stop. Just, just stop laughing at me. This is just. This is exactly why nobody likes you. Um. Yeah. Uh, there. I said it. I said it. You know who you are. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Uh, by the way, this wasn't. This wasn't aimed at Mackie. This is just a stupid bit that I'm. I think we all understand, right? Okay, so this should be implicitly redeemable. Let's run run the testerinos. And it's like, okay, now we understand that. And hopefully this this hides the complexity a little bit so that it's maybe, at least maybe a little bit more English. And it's like, oh, so um, if the string has characters at, <laughs> no, no, what are you doing, Peter? <laughs> oh no, okay, th this is, shush, it needs to, you, you, I understood it, I looked at it, I was like, yeah, this is English, and this is wrong, by the way, so if the, if the uh, string does not have characters at, then you return false, right, you don't want that, okay, cool, um, otherwise, um, so you just get you just get if the string contains uh, at positions. So if the string contains a character at certain positions, 
I fucking hate it. Contains. If the string contains character and positions, that makes more English sense if you think about it. I know that string contains is like a weird thing, but a special case or whatever. And we can go even further. And we should. We should not be afraid. Never. Never surrender or something. I don't know. Whatever. At this point, this is just a shit show. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to declare bankruptcy. <laughs> uh, private static i enumerable of strings. Now we're going to do the whole thing where we say um, get words that contain care at correct at possessions. And this is the whole thing, right? You pass in you pass in the um, I enumerable of string. I was hinting at it earlier. Words I um words that contain character character I enumerable int positions. And I'm trying to keep it the same as in the method name. Right? I'm trying to be consistent with the method name. The, the method name says words, care, or car, positions. And that's why it's words, character, positions. The same order. I don't want to confuse anyone. It's like, oh, which is which? It's like, well, obviously it's a different type for each, but still, it's good to be a little bit consistent here. And in it, I can just do this. I can just be one of those guys. Um, I don't know. Um, the fact that false is underlined is incredibly scary, but no, don't, don't worry about that. I mean, I'm just gonna fix. Oh no, this is a word. Excuse me, what did I just do? Oh, oh, sorry, no worries. Eh, I'm just maybe a little bit. I am feeling under the weather. That's my excuse. Okay, positions is positions, positions. Why aren't you happy with that? Can I convert enumerable to int array? Oh, right. Yeah, just take enumerable here. It's not gonna have max. I'm gonna cry if it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's fine. And then instead of doing the whole thing there, here. I can just say get words that contain character at and words contain character positions. And at this point, this is getting this is be so the whole filter world of well, filter world. The fil f this, this is it's called the genocide. You should not do you should not filter the world. Um, so filter words. Um, it's getting really small and understandable. And if you care about how this is implemented, you take a look. So there's more. So first of all, I can let, let's of course test it if we still have. Okay, so it works. Now let's refactor it further because here we can do uh, this is either returning false or this. So we can actually say uh, ba -ba -ba. yeah. So this needs to be true so string has to have a has to have characters there and those characters need to contain uh, sorry it needs to have those characters and they need to be right at the right positions uh, which m would make it an expression bodied method this is like whew, it's like whoo oh mama this is like expression body central <laughs> This is not, this is probably not good. We probably shouldn't go that much expression body. This is getting a bit too like unreadable. So I wouldn't like for this last one, I wouldn't go there. Uh, for this, I would at least like maybe new line it so that people at least like mildly understand what we're doing here. Something like that. Of course, you might not, maybe you don't like it and you would rather have a body there. I can respect that honestly. Um, I could respect this decision. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave it up to you. However, you 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 sort of like this. 
uh, that's up to you and your coding standards. Some people would like it, you know, like that. Some people would tell me to do, to put it here and then do this, right? Uh, this is probably the most standard variant, I think. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the most understand. I think the most understandable to most people. Uh, it's like, hey, words where? Uh, so, so you get all of the words where the string uh, has characters at these positions and contains contains char characters. At, uh, contains character at the, these positions. So it has characters at these positions, and also those characters are the right one, this one, right? So that makes sense, right? And if you care about how, how that's done, then you go there. And then the final thing here is the state. Um, this is where you realize that the method actually does two different things, right? And based on the state. So you say, is the state defined? Which is weird, because like, if state, question mark? Uh, but if if the state indeed, then uh, you return this. Otherwise, you return this. This is called a ternary operator. Again, you might not like it. You you might, but this is what peak performance looks. Like. <laughs> anyway, um, you may not like it, and if you don't like it, then that's perfectly fine. Um, this is fairly standard. I'm pretty sure, like a uh, like a ternary operator, as like the only thing in a in a method uh, is usually usually fine. So I would what I'm going to say is that this is this is what it this is what in the end I think I would maybe go for. Um, it's important to break things into, or at least uh, I think so, uh, to, to break things into smaller methods that do one thing, you know, abstract the details. I still don't like, as an, I'm going to leave this as an exercise to you. Um, I think this is very low, le uh, low level for where it's at. So I think there should actually be, um, uh, another method for it. I'm not going to leave it to you. I mean, who are you? I don't even know you. Um, so, <laughs> so I actually not going to leave it to anyone. I'm just going to do it. Uh, so we just need to get all of the words that um, don't contain that character, right? So we're going to do private static I enumerable of string. Now let's call it get words that don't, oops, that don't contain character char. Just don't contain char. And you'll be saying, well, Peter, but, but this is actually pretty concise. Um, why are we why are we doing that? Um, I'm just gonna explain it very quickly in a second. But we do first do words. We also need character all right and then instead of that we just call this method and at that point you can see ooh why 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 are you why are you ha not happy oh because there are no arguments okay um what do we pass in words and characters words character cool so this should pass and it does so now you can see that um, it goes from the highest level of abstraction, from the most high level concepts. It talks about get words that contain character at positions and getting words that don't contain character at all. Th these are very high level. And if someone wants to just quickly know what, what, what the hell does this do, then they read this and they're like, oh, so they got the idea, they got the concept. And then if they want, if they're like, get words that contain character at positions, how are we doing that? Or maybe it doesn't work. They, they think that it doesn't work. So they drop down into that and they read, oh, so uh, you do that by uh, filtering the words and getting only the words where the, the word uh, has characters at these positions and also contain the right character at those positions. Okay. And then if they're like, okay, well, how does that? I think that's not working correctly. So they drop down and they're like, okay, so you determine if those are at the right positions by taking these and then saying, 
uh, for all of the characters in that word, in that word, in that string, um, it has to be true that the the a character at that position needs to be equal to that character. So that makes sense, right? To the character that we expect. Um, and in fact, that is it. That's it. That's my suggested refactoring. Uh, I'm going to leave this whole file in uh, the description as a gist so that you may gist yourself. I don't know. <laughs> um, and of course, for Mackie to maybe think about it, but I would I would recommend Mackie go through it yourself. Do the whole tester and development thing on your own. Um, but you could see that it was enough for me just to just to unit test it to understand how it works and then I was just able to rewrite that. Uh, that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes it's you're going to try to rewrite that and it's not going to work. Uh, in which case you can either try to fix it just like I did or you could slow down, take a step back and try to refactor it from the bottom up. Bottoms up. Duh, duh. I don't know. That was like a song. I'm sorry. Um, so this was a shit show, but I hope you enjoyed this. How, how long was this? An hour and a half. It's a classic Peter move. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video uh, where I'm just I'm hopefully not going to be sick. And we're going to talk about something else. All right. Well, I'll see you. See you there. Uh, bye.